better light to see through it. Hello, guys. <laughs> and I'm gonna try. I hope I don't regret this. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. The next thing I wanna make is my air outlet for my oil coolers right inside here. Now, I wanna keep the look very much Carbon Cub look and feel. The front of this has a Carbon Cub EX2 cowling that I've gotta enlarge quite a bit for the motor, but I'm gonna keep the same lines, the same shape, and this is the outlet air that goes on that cowling. Now, this won't work here because it's not the right shape. This is rounded. However, it's carbon fiber, so I am going to take this part, and I want an air outlet. The air comes in here through the oil coolers, and I want the air outlet here tight next to the airplane and coming out underneath the horizontal, and it's gonna be uh, very minimal and held tight to the frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this part, and because I want it to look carbon cubbish, I'm gonna see if I can splash a part off of this by riveting it down onto a table straight, waxing it, pulling apart, and seeing how I can adapt it on there. But it'll probably be something in this area. I'll have to get the alignment right, but something like that. <laughs> That's the next part. That's work. Making a mess. I didn't mean to drip it everywhere, but I did. All right, guys, I'm down to the last layer, and I had it all the shape exactly the way I wanted, just little pinholes everywhere, so I mixed up one last layer, and I just smeared it in with my fingers over the whole thing. And, I mean, that's after the shaping was done, so that took about five different steps to get to here. The last step will be using really fine paper and just trying to dress it out. After I dress it out, it's gonna be several layers of really thin fiberglass over the whole part. I'll let that dry up, then I'll go in and sand it out, then wet sand it, take it down to about a 500 grit, three to 500 be enough, then I can wax it and make parts off of it. So getting closer, a couple hours in, a couple hours to go, back to work. Two hours later. All right guys, <laughs> I added a couple hours to this project because I kind of screwed up and uh, we're getting to the tail end of it, but what I would do different. When I was making this part, I did it a single layer because I wanted to be able to make sure I could still move it, set it flat on this board. Where I could have done better is I should have done at least two layers. As I pushed the Bondo into it, if I had a little more pressure on one side or the Bondo started to flash on me, that thin layer bowed more on one side than the other. So once I kind of got it going and I looked at it, I could just see it move up and down an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth. And as I tried to block across all of them, they were highs and lows and it just wasn't perfect. So it added a few hours. I had to um, add several more layers and then keep using a block and blocking out and making sure as I went, I held a perfect angle on each one. And then this one is a totally different angle and then chase that around. And so you can see a lot of color going on, a lot of of the carbon fiber gone. Some of it's completely in here and buried. Some of it's sticking up high and low. You can see it in here. That's the imperfections of it moving a little. So kind of screwed that up in my starting part, but a couple hours more sanding <laughs> and we finally got it to where I'm really happy with it and it blocks out perfectly flat across all these blades. The measurements as we measure them are exactly the same. All the angles are exactly the same. So at the end of the day, we still got a great part, but I screwed up. We fixed it. <laughs> Back to work. All right, so I've got four layers basted up on plastic, and this fiberglass layer is super thin. I love to use this for molds, especially when they got lots of shape like this one, because it's gonna move a lot. I'm gonna at least try and get it close before I pull the plastic. Okay, 
Work on this for about five minutes, get all the lines out of it. Then we'll do another layer. All right, guys, we are done with all the layers. It may not look much different, but fiberglass is on here. We'll let it dry up. And then we're just down to wet sand and fine tuning and we can make parts on it. Okay, so this is a two part, probably seen in a previous video I've done, but we got a rubber seal on here and a hole in the middle for the vacuum. And I folded two layers of this foam underneath the area to help the air suck through. Now I gotta punch a hole in the bottom of it. Right now you can already see that the resin's coming through. The vacuum is putting the pressure onto the foam and then the resin can come back through and get into the foam. Then when I pull this off and I pull the foam off, the resin comes with it. So I actually use a lot of resin on this. Normally I try and keep it really thin because I'm making a structural part. When I'm making a mold, I just put a bunch of resin. I want a lot of uh, resin, so if I want to sand or fine tune and wet sand the part, it's okay to have a lot of resin in it. This isn't a part that's made to flex or an aircraft part, so I don't mind the weight. So when I'm building a mold, I just put a ton of resin in it. Give us about a couple hours. Six hours later. All right guys, so we got the fiberglass layers down on it, sanded it out, then after we got it, really close to perfect we went ahead and painted it with a brush of the two-part resin used for the carbon fiber to build up a thick layer of resin that then we could sand again and then wet sand down to get a really smooth finish it might look like rainbow sherbet ice cream frozen on wood that is awesome but <laughs> it's actually really smooth now i could put carbon fiber on here and bag apart that would give me a part that the underside of the part would be perfect. The top side would have all the layers and you'd then have to sand that out, which is a lot of work. It's possible, that's how we did those. We made a mold on Scrappy, put the carbon on the outside, but everywhere there's an overlap, we have to add enough carbon thickness that I can sand back down to that because I don't have a reverse mold. So right now, I've got a male side of a mold that I could lay carbon on. But when I pull the part off, I'd have to sand everywhere there's a joint and do a lot of work on it. So I'm now gonna use this mold to make a negative or the female side of it by laying up fiberglass. I've waxed this up. I'll lay fiberglass in it, several layers, vacuum bag it down to get it really tight. After I get that done, I'll pop it off to make sure it releases, slip it right back down, build a wood box around it, fill it up with Bondo. The Bondo will stick to the fiberglass that is on this side, the wax on the under, and when that hardens, I'll pop it off, flip it over, and I'll have a negative of this. Once I have the negative, I'll wet sand that fiberglass layer, polish it, then I can bag carbon fiber into it, and when it comes off, I'll have a mirror finish ready for paint, rather than layers that I need to sand out of it. So. We're more than halfway done, but to kind of give you an idea of the starting point, I wanted this look, but flat. And if you look, this is longer than this one. I did a volumetric calculation of the mass airflow that I need to get through the oil coolers, and this was too much. This is handling an engine, a four-cylinder engine, but I wanted that look, so when I made this mold, I cut off a couple of the fins but it still has the same shape, arc, radius, uh, lift, angles, so that when you see them from on two ends of the plane, they're gonna look very, very similar, just one slightly smaller. So this came from that. Let's make a, another mold, the opposite side. Back to work. All right guys, I'm almost done doing the, the hard part. There's really not any hard part, it's just time consuming. You gotta do it in strips and then cut each one to get around these corners because, oh no, I got bad scissors. New scissors! I do. Call for Ron. And these are about shot too. Anytime you're going around the corner, 
you got a relief cut them. This is the pill ply. So get this pill ply down. I'll finish going across. I'll bag it, vacuum it, put a suction on it, suck it down tight. Once it dries, pop it off, put in the bondo, pop that off, I should have a mold. Start all over, make two parts. <laughs> all right, what I've done is I tape this edge off so I have something that doesn't have resin on it so I can stick the bag to. So I'm gonna trim this all off and have a dry spot underneath to put the vacuum bag to. All right, if you find this comical, you should. <laughs> how this heat box is put together. One day I needed a heater for a part, and this is like 10 years ago or more, and I have some scrap aluminum, so we just cut it up, put it together with foil tape, cut a hole in the top, and put on this electric heater. And the dang thing still holds together. I'm still making parts with it, so since I don't have a big oven here, I just kick this on. We're gonna warm this up, and it's done right in a couple hours maybe 45 minutes. So I can't believe this thing's still kicking around. <laughs> it's got a few hundred more molds to make. All right, guys, this is actually working out really well. I put on the box, it's only been about 30, 45 minutes. You can see how perfect this part turned out. But notice these edges are still soaking wet. That is gonna be even better, that's because these were on the other side of the box. So the area that the heat box wasn't on is wet and the middle is dry. But now I've got this wood frame we made. It can go down on the wet carbon fiber and I can go ahead and fill this with Bondo and the Bondo on the wet carbon fiber can cure and stick to this wood. We can pop this thing off, flip it over, the mold's done. So. I'm gonna mix up some bono fast work. Just throwing in filler, <laughs> can be anything. So I don't need as much bondo. All right, I think this is my last batch. I don't know. I don't know what other airplanes I'm gonna use this mold for, but hopefully something. <laughs> Maybe my next racer. A little longer than a few minutes later. I don't think it's going to be a little bit short. Ah, uh, a little bit short. One more batch and we'll have it. Flat enough. This will make good mold. Okay, I want to point out something while this is drying up. I want you to notice this mold I made. I put a little block on this end and a block on this end. You can see there's just, there's nothing in the middle. The reason for that is once this dries up, the likelihood of getting this to pop free, even though we waxed it, it gets really challenging. But I can now twist this over the edge of the table and bend it. And it'll take this board and it'll unfold it off of this mold. So I got this mold that's solid, it won't flex. The mold under it will, and I can pop the two apart. So that's the goal. <laughs> we'll see how it works. Check this out. Double duty. All right guys, we're done sanding. So I'm gonna try and just flex the middle of this on the bottom and see if it'll pop kind of like an ice tray. And it went. Ta-da! <laughs> well, shoot, got a little bit of, couple of little flaws in here, I'm gonna have to do a little more body work. I used a really heavy carbon fiber, and uh, I was a little worried that when I sucked it down, it would start to pull bridges across some of these bumps. So, oh well, a little more sand. But there is a mold. Trim the edges off. I got another hour or two of body work to do on it, and then we can actually make the first part off of it. 328. A.M. All right, guys, this silly little part is taking forever. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going until it's done, even if the sun comes out. So I'm now putting on layers of uh, filler primer down to the final steps, using a little bit of 
dabs of um, kind of a flowable Bondo putty. And I'm touching up the last little bit. Then I'll add some more. Then I'll wet sand. If it's good, we'll go with it. If not, I'm gonna wait. Do a couple more layers of paint and go through it again. But it has been a tiny part that has taken, I don't even wanna tell you how many hours, way too long. So we're just gonna keep going until it's done. So <laughs> back to work. <laughs> it feels like forever, but I finally get to make the actual part. And uh, if you look right there on the table, I've got the sheets all ready to go. Got them on the plastic so I can peel them apart. Now, I usually like to do as big a part as possible, or big a piece of carbon fiber as possible, but there's so many curves that are going different directions that I really can't do much bigger than this. Because you're gonna see, as I go around this bend, it starts to make little wrinkles. And if it's too big of a part, I can't drag against the grain and pull it out very well. So I'm just gonna do one layer at a time, one step at a time and keep working my way across. So that was four and a half inches. I think I'm gonna go four and a quarter on the next one, not get too close to this radius. I don't like carbon right on a hard radius, an edge, because it wants to lift. So I'm gonna make sure I put all my joints down in a flat and then let the radius of the hard radiuses be a solid piece of carbon. So I'm gonna kind of bridge each one, go across this four times and bag it. Back to work. All right guys, we're on our second set of shark fins. <laughs> this is the air outlet for the oil coolers. And uh, I'm also working at the same time, the start of the avionics panel. So some of the subframe and I need some 90 degree kind of angle iron, I guess angle carbon fiber, but just a hard 90. So on the last part, I ended the part up here, but whenever I need a few 90s, I just run it long. And when I bag this down, I'll have a 90 right there and another 90 right there. So I can get two small 90 degree angle iron or parts, carbon fiber parts, at the same time I'm making this part with really no effort, extra effort. So three parts, price of one. <laughs> Best deal ever. A final step <laughs> always makes me happy to be at pill ply. This is the best part because <laughs> I'm done. Vacuuming it down. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see how we do. It's like opening another Christmas present. Woohoo, still hot. Who wrapped this thing anyway? It's the way I wrap Christmas presents. It looks more like newspapers and duct tape. My kids make fun of me because I can build some crazy machines and when it comes to wrapping presents, throw it in a ball, twist it together, put a piece of tape on it. It's good enough. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Woo! Perfect. And it's actually absolutely perfect. All I got on here is a little bit of wax. Not even that. Success. All right, guys. We got the pill ply down. We got the foam. Vacuum bag. You can see right here how well just this radius on the table worked to put a hard 90. This will be the edge that goes down to give me strength on the part, the higher side, the step in the carbon fiber here. This is about done. We'll bag it up. If you see down here, this part's probably Got a little more time, but I got a spare pump. So uh, this is my second of these two parts. I'm gonna start trimming this out, putting the holes, the vent pins in it. So 
I'll get that done, trim this out, that should be dry. That'll be going for a few hours. That's work. All right, guys. Finally finished a couple of parts that took quite a process. Recap, I wanted this front lower cowling to match the back of the plane for my oil coolers. So I pulled off this from that side. It was rounded, forced it flat, turned it into a male mold, reversed it, made a female mold, pulled that part, turned it into that part, which uh, I tend to get a lot of people asking how much things weigh, so we're gonna show you a couple things. This part, 7.1 ounces, and it's strong enough to stand on. I hope I don't regret this, but for a part that weighs ounces, that is unbelievable, which is absolutely crazy. I'm gonna get some alcohol. I'll show you what that looks like with a little clear on it. Then right here, I made another part. And a lot of people are asking how much more cost weight strength difference from aluminum to carbon fiber. So I wanted to make a part that matched. So here's a part I pulled a part off of. I made this one. This one's not gonna be a real fair comparison, but you're still, I'm gonna show you the numbers and it's gonna blow you away. It does me anyway, every time. This part, I put a lip on it that made uh, another over an inch and a half on length on this side. I added length to this side. These edges I made taller than these edges. So this is actually a larger part than this part. And I wanna show you the thickness and the weight and the cost and the strength. That's 032 aluminum. This, I want it to be stronger. This is gonna be part of the floor of Scrappy. I am an 048. So for this to be a true fair comparison, I would have to have one less layer of carbon fiber on here and the two would be perfect. This is four layers. To be a perfect match, I'd have to do three to be the same. But I wanted a lot more strength. But watch what happens when you check the weight. If I put this aluminum on the scale, like I said, this is a smaller part than this one. 32.56, it's called 32 and a half. 32 and a half ounces, thicker, bigger part, 25. So even though I made a little bit larger part and I'm 25% thicker, I'm still almost 25% less weight than aluminum. And if I were to take a tool and smack this, like a metal mallet or something, I wouldn't hurt this thing. So everything's a trade-off. Here's the trade-off. This is about 12 bucks to bend and make out of aluminum. This was 212 or 13 dollars. I calculated it out just a minute ago and close enough. Just over 200 dollars. If you figured your time was shop rate, low level shop rate, $50 an hour, add another hundred bucks to it. This part, 310, 350 bucks range. But it is absolutely strong. Let's add a little labor for the bending, punching, trimming. 25, let's round it up, 50 bucks. Let's just call it 50 to 300. That's the difference. So um, I'm gonna go for it, because on my plane, I've got a lot of weight, a lot of engine. So I'm trying to make it up everywhere I can. I've got about a dozen panels like this I can pull out, knock off a pound per panel. There's 12 pounds, but I also get all the strength, no corrosion, everything else. So I'm gonna go for it. It's gonna cost me about 2,500 bucks to swap out the interior. Now the exterior, I don't wanna talk about that number. It's a big number, <laughs> it's a lot more. The interior panels, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend about $2,500 in carbon fiber, replace everything with carbon, save a little bit of weight, try and make it up where I can. So I got a lot of panels to make. Let's get back to work.